Welcome back, friends, for round two with one of the local homies that, man, he was huge before. And then all of a sudden, over the last few months, doubled numbers on the social medias, which is insane. And I guess we'll have to ask him how and why. But thank you so much for taking your time to hang out with me again. Of Welcome course. to the show, Jaren. <laughs> Dude, you're back. I'm back. How many Round times two. have you been to this house since our interview? <laughs> Probably over 10. Yeah, dude. Definitely over 10. Yeah, the first time, though, <laughs> when we did the interview was the, literally the first time I met you, yeah, right? Yeah, that was the first time we met. Yeah, you were all yeah. quiet. I was like, quiet nervous. nervous. So that was your first interview, right? Yeah, first ever interview. This is the second one. Still a little nervous, but... Dude, yeah, you don't do interviews. <laughs> no, I'm it's, never, it's really. my pleasure to have you back on the show. So, what do people know you from? I mean, everyone's going to tune in; they already know you. But the people on my end, anyways, that don't know you, mm -hmm. who are you? How do people know you? I'm known as the 360 food guy. I just eat and drink random combos that people suggest in the comments, and that's pretty much what people know me as. Yeah, dude, kid yeah. who blew up from nobody even knows Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, <laughs> yeah. um, and nobody even knows what you look like because True. 90 percent of your post plus you have uh, the camera on. So what's the, what is the camera and try to describe it? Uh, so it's pretty much this camera right here. We have it set up on the skull, but it's pretty much like a demonstration of how it looks on my head. I just put it on like a head strap and it hangs over my forehead. And then it just shows this absurd view of my face, makes it really long. And you can see like, everything in the room around you which is i don't even really know how it works it's just really cool yeah I, I don't understand either like it looks like it's only one camera but i gotta feel like to have the peripherals to go 360 you would have to have more than one somehow yeah. why don't you put it on yeah, i just want to do that I, don't, I haven't really seen you wear it too Ooh. many times we did a couple skits together true but still i want people to see what you look like with yes. it on. so it just pretty much goes on just like this and then it just hangs down and that's pretty much how I look when I'm recording my videos. <laughs> Which you do for like five hours a day. Yeah, literally though. But yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Sick, dude. Well, so what's happened since the last time we did the interview? We went and we did Reverb Festival together. That yes. was kind of killer. But yeah. uh, in general, what's been going on? Last time I talked to you, you were still working a job. I think you quit, but now you're working again. But now yeah. you're working with a bunch of different brands. And mm -hmm. yeah, what's, what's different? So pretty much since the last interview, I was... I was working a full-time job and then I shortly quit after that to pursue social media full-time. But then I wanted to buy a house and I can't really buy one right now being self-employed. So I was like, screw it. We're going to go back on the grind. So I went back to my old job working full-time again and creating content on the side. So it's going pretty good. Dude. Yeah. Nobody has the drive that you no, have. Not no. very many people, I would say. <laughs> like Wyatt, our challenging. mutual friend does. There's mm -hmm. a few people that we know, yeah. but man, people think that like, oh, well, I mean, I know even when I first saw your stuff, I was like, dude, this dude's like obviously reaching way more people, which means he's obviously making more money than me. And he's 10 years younger. And these videos <laughs> got to take like five minutes. Like yeah. what in yeah. the world is going on here? But no, dude, like if you want to blow up and you want things to go, it really is like a significant grind. We it's talked about grind. this off mic a while ago, but when you first started getting uh, TikToks to go off, explain how many videos per day, like how much time actually went into it before it started to take off. So pretty much like from zero followers, I started posting eight to 10 videos a day, just trying to get myself out there. That I think that's the key. The more you upload on these short form, the more people are going to see it, obviously. So that's pretty much what I would do. So I would go to work from six to four 30, come home, film eight videos, have to edit them. I'll probably get done around 11 and then go to bed and just repeat it. It's just a cycle of grinding. So how much time went into like, it, we're talking about you were working for eight hours, plus you have to you have to factor in your break, driving to and from, whatever, but then mm -hmm. for the actual creating of the videos and then uploading the videos, editing, that whole thing, like yeah. approximately how many hours per day during that time frame was that? And for how long were you doing that, like mm. eight to 10 videos a day? Um, so a lot of time actually goes into it because I have to scroll through my comments, pick out which ones I think are going to do the best. And I pretty much just do like the top comment every time, the one with the most likes, because that's what the most people want to see. Oh, so sure. then I get all my comments done. I usually probably pick out like four of them a day from the most recent videos. Then I have to go to the store, get everything that I need for the videos. Then I have to go back to my filming spot, set it all up, film the video, render the videos, edit the videos, and then post them. So it takes... To do one video, I would say probably takes two hours. So, Whoa. yeah. 
Yeah, man. I, like I said, I don't think people realize how much time and energy goes into it. Mm-hmm. They're like, man, you're just doing all this stuff and it's just working. It's like, well, kind of mm-hmm. like, obviously you get lucky with some things, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, when you're creating content, you're just like making stuff, making stuff, making stuff, waiting till something kind of hits. But all the people who have had things hit that I know personally, it's never been like right away. No. The no, reason it that so it worked time. was because they put in way more yeah. time and energy into trying to get it to work than anybody else. And not only that, once they have something take off, you can't just have it be the same forever. You mm-hmm. have to continuously try. So yes, let's yeah. talk about that because you were at, I had met you in kind of like really quickly, just Instagram as like an example. Obviously, TikTok's got what, three, four million or whatever too. But yeah, yeah. on Instagram, you had grown from like nothing up to 300 some K and then you were stuck at like 450, for a while. stuck at 450,000. <laughs> oh no. It was probably like eight months. Yeah, for yeah. like a long time. And yeah. me and you were talking um, when we were just hanging out of like, well, so like, what do I do now? Because mm-hmm. it's just really stagnant. You're putting all this work and you're not seeing growth. So That's now, the hardest part. <laughs> as of today, you're at like 926. 931. K. Okay, see, 5,000 <laughs> since I checked like two days ago. Good for you. <laughs> Must be nice. Uh, but yeah, so what happened? You got to a point of just kind of getting bored with it? Or like, what other things did you try before something else yeah. hit? And then what has hit that has made things to change? Yeah, so basically, I started doing Instagram like before we met. I was... I was literally at zero followers on Instagram. Then I just started posting what I would normally post on Instagram, which was just normal food combos from the comments. And it actually blew up on Instagram, gained like 400,000, like you said, in probably three months, which was insane. It was was a skyrocket growth. And then after that, it kind of just went stagnant for a while. Like eight months, I was stuck going down and up from 450. I got up to 458. Then I went down to 440. Then I went back up, back down, back up. And that's like the hardest part of the grind. Like when you're not seeing results, it like makes you want to quit, but you just got to know that it's going to take off again if you just keep working. And that's where people like fail a lot, I think, because they just give up once it not it stops working. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think a big part of it too is people see if somebody sees, I was watching some some thing where we're talking about the psychology behind why it sucks to go viral. Mm-hmm. Because you have that happen, you have this huge rush and like all this like success, like boom, it's right in front of you. Yep. And then you're constantly trying to chase that high. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? Of I like, how can I get to that again? And then everything else feels lackluster in comparison because yep. nothing else is going that way. So even though really in perspective, if you're like, dude, I got like 450,000 followers and mm-hmm. like i'm pretty young and i like it li- where i live that's like an incredible feat but yeah. still when you're not seeing growth on it it kind of like it drags you down yeah but you it just really gotta does. like gotta get out of that mindset but i i struggle with it a lot where i'm like why didn't this video perform like this video it's the same thing like why isn't it doing as good but you just got to stop looking at the numbers and just focus on what you have and like focus on the people that love watching your videos and that's that's pretty much why I continue to grind is the people that comment every day like on Instagram I have such a amazing fan base where I see the same people coming back every day and it's just it makes me so happy that people come back and like actually enjoy my videos. Yeah, dude, you have people that'll be like day 28 yeah, and then they'll yeah. list what they want. So if somebody wants to get you to actually do their combo, do they need to go ask all of their friends to go like their <laughs> comment? Is like that the secret to be able to get it's, you to do it? It's honestly random. Sometimes I'll just scroll for mi- like 10 minutes until I'm like, that one sounds like it'd be a great video and I'll have no likes on the comment and then I'll yeah. just do it. It's, it's like luck based to be honest, but... Sometimes, or most of the time, the top comment, it'll have like 200 to however many thousands of likes on it. I'm like, okay, obviously people want to see this one, so I'm going to do it for the people that want to see it, so. Yeah, do you push and wait for things where it's like, I just don't want to personally do this one (laughs) because it sounds awful? Because it's not like you're eating like banana splits, like you're eating stuff that sucks. I'm eating either really good things or really bad things but sometimes it surprises me so yeah i don't really care what it is it can be whatever i'm just not going to do something that can actually like injure me or like make me sick sure that's pretty much what i stay away from but otherwise i'll pretty much do whatever what is the most in the since i well i've met you a million times since then but since the first interview what's the uh what's something that you had to try that you had never tried before maybe it's just one ingredient or it's a whole combo that actually is good that people should go try. Oh my gosh. I just had one the other day. I already forgot what it was, <laughs> to be honest, because I do so many. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How many are you doing a day question. right now still? Four. On top of going to work? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm uh, lazy. That's such a good question. I'd have to think about that. There was one that I did the other day that I was like, whoa, this is actually like insanely good. We'll look it up and we'll come back to it. What yes, about the worst? Yes. The What's worst? something that you like, if anybody puts this in the combo, that ingredient's not happening again. No Anything like warm, fast food blended up is just terrible it sucks every time Dude, i feel like everything blended other than a smoothie <laughs> sounds horrible so yeah let's i guess let's talk about that so you were doing all the food combos and mm-hmm. me and you talked and you were like maybe i should try to go and do this in public maybe i yep. should have random people do it maybe i should try to go get celebrities to like do combos yeah. how did you fall into i didn't fall into but how did you figure out the blender thing and explain that because that's what has all of a sudden caused your numbers yeah, to double what, in like two three months yeah yeah that the blender went crazy but yeah, as you were saying, I was stuck because I was just doing like the normal food combos, just like adding ingredients in a cup and then just drinking it. And that was stagnant for eight months. And I was like, well, I need to come up with another idea because obviously people are getting bored of this. Right. So I was coming to you. I was like, what do you think I should do? And I was like, maybe I could like try to dip into like public content where I have people try a food combo, which was a great idea. But yeah, I'm just I don't know. I don't really like talking to people out in public I guess I get really nervous so I was like man that really isn't for me I want to do something where I'm alone in my house where I can just be myself and no one's really going to judge but so I was like what if I try blending up the food combos and it worked it was a great idea and it's still going really good people love to see it so what was the first one that uh took off of the blending because you said you've had like a handful that were like Mm -hmm. millions of views yeah one of the first ones that took off was i blended up like a mcdonald's cheeseburger and some chicken nuggets and some sprite i think was in it oh that was the first like blender combo that sounds kind of horrible <laughs> there's really bad you got to get a blender sponsor dude i should i use a ninja blender so dude yeah ninja <laughs> give the shout out so let's explain to people how some of this stuff works because i know when i talked to you before you were kind of at the like beginning of starting to deal with brand deals and stuff and Mm -hmm. figuring out like, well, how do I make a living off of this five plus hours a day that's going into this? Obviously like got an audience. It's bigger than huge brands. Like Mm -hmm. quick trip, by the way, their Instagram is dope. If you don't know it, it, it's hilarious. Paige and Hayden, dude, ever since they took it over and just started (laughs) making like memes all the time, it's like the most genius marketing strategy and like big companies that are recognizing you, you need to stop hiring these marketing agencies and just hire like young people that yes. know what they're doing at the platform. Yep. Those are the brands that that's what I would it. love to do. If I wasn't doing content for myself, I would love to make content for another company. Just like, cause I know how to get, people's attention like i feel like i would do really good at that too i'm sure you would but i feel like if you went that route putting in all that energy you would just like think well i could just put the time into my own exactly you know and realistically the returns better Mm -hmm. right the return is way better if you build up a brand social media right like quick trip as an example i think they had like twenty six thousand followers when i started following them like i don't know a couple years ago or a year and a half ago or something whenever i interviewed chris cruzy the first time yeah was when i was like man i like i would love to work with quick trip since then, dude, they're at, at last I checked was like 160, yeah, 160,000 or something in that time frame for a gas station chain. <laughs> that's like, crazy. Dude, yeah, it's crazy. It's so good. Right? So but good. like if Paige or Hayden, the two girls that you see in all the those skits, if they just like made their own social media outlet and they were able to grow it to 160K, yep. I'm sure that Quick Trip is compensating them like fairly because yep. they're just a dope company. But True. like, dude they would be setting themselves up for significantly more money in the long run. So that's why I don't understand when I see people do it. I'm like, that sounds great. And especially having consistency and stuff, but like I have a hard time investing into things that aren't mine. Exactly. That sounds kind of selfish to say, but I agree though. Yeah, it's it's true. Yeah. Like you got to build yourself up like before you start building other people up. Yeah. I think so too. You know, then you'll be in a position to do so. So anyway, so you had, uh, met our friend Wyatt Iden, which you introduced me to him and he graduated the year uh, before you in chip. And he's crushing it on the social media. And he's just like, there are very few people that I've met that it's like super noticeable (laughs) to me that they're smarter than me. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm a smart person. I'm not saying I'm smarter than everybody. It's just not usual that I meet someone where they're so much smarter than me that it's like very obvious. And he is one of those people, him and Dessa are the two people I've interviewed that, 
like, wow, dude, I feel like an idiot when I talk to you. <laughs> Not because they're mean, but just like they're they're so geniuses, smart. Yeah, Wyatt right? knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, so he kind of helped you, even though you have like more Instagram followers and stuff. But he kind of helped you start understanding how to make a living off it. Because again, mm-hmm. when I first interviewed Big you, time. you really didn't know what you were doing. No, what I was were some so of the things new. that you learned? about that and how to like build a career out of it he pretty much taught me because at first i thought that all these companies were like reaching out to him and like i was like how are you getting all these companies to reach out to you but he actually told me that i have to reach out to them so he sends out so many emails a day to different companies to try to get a sponsor and even if they don't respond the first time he'll keep going at them until he gets either a no response or until he gets what he wants from them pretty much so That helped me a lot too, to get like a little bit more sponsors. I don't have as much as him, but I'm gaining a few more. So it helps, it helps a lot. Quick plugs for him. Who are some of the sponsors you currently work with? I work with Insta360, I work with Quick Trip, I work with DoorDash and Pizza Hut right now. Nice, dude. Yeah, yes. me, and, me and you got on the Quick Trip game like right at the same time, yeah. which I know me and you were both talking about it beforehand, like, dude. Uh-huh. And it, it really isn't, I know I'm just like plugging the heck out of them, but like, it's not even because I'm sponsored that I'm like plugging the heck out of them. Dude, Quick yeah. Trip's just the best convenience my, store. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. been the best I think one. I mentioned this in our last interview, but I used to work at Quick Trip when oh, I was in you? college, so. Wild, dude. It's just, I love the store. It's my favorite store. I think they're just one of the companies that recognizes, like, stop worrying about cutting costs and worry about investing in growth. Yeah. And like, that, dude, that's what's worked for them. They're like, yes. yeah, they definitely dominate. But I think that's a big part of it. And it's similar with, uh, you know, with creatives, with reaching out for contracts and stuff. Um, it's a similar thing with music artists and, and really any creative in order to be successful. People aren't just going to find you. Mm-hmm. Like they really aren't. It doesn't work that way. People, I don't know why they get stuck in their head about it. I think it's because a lot of us, me included, you don't want to come across as egotistical or like fool yourself. So you don't want to constantly go out and self promote. Yeah. But like <laughs> you have to do that. It's you have part to. of it. And yes. all these major artists that don't self promote, it's because they have PR agents and teams that do the promotion for them. Exactly. But like, they're still paying for the promotion. They're still doing that. And I learned that when I was in sales a long time ago of like, which is part of why I don't do sales anymore because I don't like doing it. But (laughs) if you want to actually make money, you have to proactively do that, right? Like you have to seek out what those brand deals are. Like with Quick, Quick Trip, I think, yeah, I think I sent them the first message right after my first interview with Chris Kersey. Mm hmm. Like I was messaging them probably every like, I don't know, two to four months for like a year and a half yeah. before I finally convinced them to like, hey, I think I'm the only podcast you work with. Like you <laughs> should probably do that. It's yeah. going to be dope. It took me like three times of hitting them up to finally receive yeah. something back. Well, and me. I think there's a lot of things behind that too. It's not just about somebody wanting to work with you. Yeah. It's a, especially like if you're trying to work with a bigger company and, mm-hmm. and this applies not just talking about like content creators, but again, like musicians, if you want to perform at a certain venue, right. Or mm-hmm. like you want to be a part of this like music festival or you want to whatever. A lot of times it's just about you have to contact them at the right time. Yes. Right. It's yep. like where they actually need someone. Well, that's what I mean. It's exactly. like you, you have to be the solution for their need. That is a priority for them to solve at that moment. Yep. So even if you're the right person and you know, you are, they, they just not, might not be the right time where they need you yet. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to unabashedly be like constantly contacting these companies. And if anything, man, like if you're sending DMS to like fans saying, Hey, go pre-save my thing. I get why people do that. But if mm-hmm. you're doing that all the time, I understand how that may come across as thirsty or whatever. True. But like a company, it, when you're looking for some kind of deal like that, it doesn't look bad to be thirsty when you're reaching out to a company. It just yeah. shows that like you really want to yes, work with it them. shows that you like them and you really want to work with them. So, right. Yeah. And that's likely how you're going to be able to like make that happen. Exactly. So how come, you're working a job again because you definitely don't <laughs> have to. Not saying you're making like millions, but I'm just saying like yeah, it's definitely you don't like, have to. I don't have to, but it's nice to have like an extra income. Like you don't have to feel bad. Like I have a lot of followers, but the followers doesn't translate to how many dollars I have. And sure. that's like a misconception that people have on social media. They're like, oh, this dude has millions of followers. He must have millions of dollars, which is completely false. Like right. sometimes you just don't get paid a lot so you have to you have to grind to get what you want that's pretty much it and i really want to buy a house like that's like my main goal and it just wouldn't work unless i have a job so that's pretty much why i have one i just want to save up as much money as possible and 
yeah dude that's a big problem that people don't think about when they go self-employed yes is that like you don't have proof of income for anything you don't have anything it's really hard to even rent yes it, it literally i had a problem like the other month where my lease is gonna end soon but i got this duplex that i live in right now i rent it but I had a job at the time I signed it, yeah. and then I quit after, and then I didn't have a, a job when I was applying for this new duplex that I wanted to move into, and they wanted $7,000 down to whoa. just move in. I was like, whoa, that's like... For a duplex, like for something you weren't even buying? I wasn't even buying, I was just renting it, because there is no proof of income, and then sure. it was, because me and my girlfriend are both self-employed, so it's like, they don't know. Right. So, yeah, I guess, but that's a difficult thing. I mean, like for myself, I remember I went to Japan. This was like nine, eight, nine years ago or something. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to raise my credit uh, line for my credit card that I used to like purchase inventory for the shop, right? Yeah. Cause I was gonna be gone for like three weeks. And I'm like, I just don't want to deal with logging in and making payments during the time. I just want to have enough balance that like available balance that I could order all my merchandise during this time frame. And yes. I'll, just, I'll worry about yeah. when I get back and they wouldn't raise it. And I was like, dude, but I've spent a lot of money <laughs> over the last 12 calendar months and yeah. paid off all of it. Like the, you can see how much money I spend per month is more than the limit on the card yeah. because I'm buying all the inventory for the store. Right. So it's like, I'd have to you know, spend however many thousand and then that week pay off however many thousand and then continue to do that. Okay. And they still wouldn't raise it even though it was very, very obvious that That's, I could yeah, it's pay so that. Yeah, so strange. Simply because of that was like how things used to be, that like you mm-hmm. had to have proof of income. So like yep. that is a, a challenge for a lot of people who are trying to do um, what, I guess what you do, what mm-hmm. I do to a certain degree. We do a little yeah. bit different, but it is like a yeah. challenge that everybody runs into. It is, it is. It's Plus, like the main challenge. Dude, so <laughs> I know like last time you were super nervous. We only had one camera angle. Mm-hmm. I know you really want to actually tell your story in yeah. a little bit, uh, yeah. I don't know. Tell it better. Yeah, <laughs> and I now wanna... that you have like a whole new audience and <laughs> stuff, and like yep. really working on YouTube. There's a lot of people that support you online that don't know anything about you. So exactly. I will let you tell <laughs> yeah. the story of how Jaren came to be, as far as the internet, Jaren. Yes, yeah. As you said last time, I I was really nervous and I didn't really explain it that well or go into much detail about it. But yeah, I kind of want to just tell how I came to be on social media. So. Pretty much I was going to college for HVAC, for an HVAC degree, and I'm still doing that right now. That's like That's what like I insulation. do. It's like heating and cooling, so I like put in the heating systems and yeah, houses okay. and stuff. It's yeah. pretty fun. It's not bad. But I was in college, and TikTok had like just blown up. And I was like, man, I'm not getting this app. It's like for like young people dancing and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into TikTok And then one of my friends in college convinced me to download it because he was laughing at all these videos. So I downloaded it. I didn't create any content or anything. I was just watching TikTok and I was like, man, this is what I want to do. Because I think like way back in the day, I would make content on YouTube. Like when I was in middle school, it was was like gaming content, stuff like that, trick shotting on Black Ops 2. So I've always wanted to do content. And I was like, man, this is like what I want to do, like short form content. It seems really fun to do. You can blow up on followers you can make it into a career so i was like you know what i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a video <laughs> dog's whining We're good. he's a cute dog yeah yeah <laughs> so one of my friends actually told me to post a video on tiktok and i was like i don't know man maybe so i went home in my parents basement just started doing these random skit videos just like with random viral sounds nothing really took off i think i gained like 500 followers in probably two months and I was like man this is so cool like I have 500 followers this is crazy and I still remember my first viral video kind of viral it got 20,000 views on TikTok it was with me and my girlfriend she like it was like a random skit where she like threw a can of pop at me or something and it got like 20,000 views and I was like dude that's like more people that live in my town saw my video this is so cool yeah. so it like inspired me to start grinding these videos so then I started doing these type of videos it was like a trend there was only one person can comment on these video and so I would do like different people can only comment on this video then I would make a second account and comment something really funny on the video and people just loved it. I gained like 
a hundred thousand followers in a month or something doing those. And I was like, dude, this is so cool. Cause I think my first ever viral video I was working at quick trip and it was one of those only one person can comment videos and it got a million views. And I was like, Holy Whoa. crap, this is crazy. Like a million views on a video. That's insane. So then something happened with TikTok, and my account actually got permanently banned at 150,000 followers. And it, made me super bummed. I couldn't make videos. I couldn't get in my account. And I was like, dude, that sucks. Maybe this is a sign where I shouldn't be doing this. I think I'm going to quit. So then I quit doing content for about two to three months. And I was like, dude, I really miss making this content. So I took my other account that I used to comment the funny stuff on my main. I took that account because it had like, I think it had 18,000 followers on it okay. just because like people would see those comments, click on the account and follow it for whatever reason. So I just had like a free 20,000 followers with no videos. So I was like, perfect. This is like a perfect opportunity for me to start again. So then I actually took my 360 camera that I do right now. And I just started like doing these weird, like dancing, like just moving around all funny with this camera on and people loved it. And it gained me like, I want to say like, 500,000 followers on TikTok within a month, the month Whoa. of March. It was crazy. Yeah. Just a skyrocket blow up. So I was like, "Whoa, this is really cool." And then I saw a comment on one of my videos telling me to like I think the first one I did was eat a nutter butter. Someone commented, "You should eat a nutter butter with the camera on." And I was like, "Okay." So then I just ate this nutter butter. It wasn't me talking, wasn't me anything. It was like a 7-second video. So I just ate this and it blew up like crazy so i was like no way so that's pretty much where the commenting on my videos started of like telling me what to do so i wouldn't talk in my videos it's just a like a song in the background of me eating random foods like people another one that blew up was eating a slim jim that one went crazy viral has like 20 million views and then so i gained i went up to like 1.8 million followers after that doing that within that blow up was probably 20 days. I gained wow. like a million followers. It was unreal. So I was like, okay, we, we got to keep doing these suggestion videos. And then like an idiot that I was back in the day, I was like, this is kind of childish. I don't really want to make these type of videos anymore. So I stopped completely, did a full 180, tried posting like car content on my TikTok. Everything flopped, wasn't even getting like 10,000 views on a video. And I was like, man, this kind of sucks. So I was like, well, maybe I kind of want to do these funny videos again. So I went back after probably, I would say nine months of making car content. a long time. Yeah, away. it was right. a long time where I'd was losing followers on TikTok, honestly, from right. 1.8 was going down. So then I started doing, I had this idea with our friend Darton, you know, Darton. Yeah, Weaver, yeah. Yep, so I was gonna do like public food combos like we just talked about before. Yeah. This was probably over a year ago now, but I was like, I'm gonna ask people what their weirdest food combo is, and then I'm gonna go home and try it. And I did a few of those videos. They kind of worked out because I wasn't using this camera anymore. Oh, okay. It was just like a normal phone interviewing people. Yeah. And the videos did okay. Like one got like a hundred thousand views, which is really good. But it wasn't what I wanted to do because I don't really like talking to people that that much. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, I want to do something where I can do alone. So I was like, what if I ask the people in the comments what a weird food combo is, and then I try with my 360 camera. So that's where the food combo started, and that was in March of last year again in. 2024, I think, okay. or 2023, one of the two. 2023. Was it? Yeah, well, because right now it's 2024 in March. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I thought it was 2025. <laughs> <laughs> That's what TikTok wild. does to your brain. <laughs> yes, it fries your brain. Anyways, 2023, <laughs> March, I was doing food combos again, and I went from 1.8 million followers all the way up to 3 million in a single month oh from doing food combos, and that was like... It was the best time I've ever had on social media. It was just so fun reenacting all these food combos and people loved it. And then I was like, man, I'm going to start uploading these on Instagram. Like, why would I not transfer to other social medias? So then I started uploading the food combos on Instagram in like June of 2023. And it blew me up from literally I had 400 followers probably just from people that knew me were you uploading school. past ones that went no. viral or it was just the current like once you made a new one for tiktok i'll just also throw that on yeah that's pretty okay. much what i was doing so yeah. i was just 
free uploading videos that I would do on TikTok onto Instagram. How many were you posting a day on Instagram? Was it the uh, same number on TikTok and Instagram? Eight, eight of them. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So eight videos a day. I was doing. I was doing eight videos a day for two years, probably. Oh God. Actually, probably a year. Probably a year yeah. straight. I was doing eight videos a day, and. So then I started blowing up on Instagram too. I gained like 400,000 followers in three months. And I was like, dang, this is super cool. And then at that point, TikTok started to slow down. We're coming into current day. So I'm at currently at like 3.5 million followers on Instagram, which is pretty cool. On I haven't, TikTok. Oh yeah, on TikTok, yeah. yeah. Um, it's really good, but I haven't been uploading as much. But so transitioning into Instagram, we talked about this earlier, but I was stagnant for about six months. And then I started doing the blender videos, which has skyrocketed so much. And I haven't really got into the blender videos on TikTok yet because I, I mentioned this on my Instagram like a month or two ago. I was, I couldn't get into my TikTok account. It got hacked for a while. It just screwed everything up, screwed all my brand deals up, screwed everything up. And it kind of just made my TikTok page fall down. Like no one even really goes on it anymore, which is, it's okay, but it's whatever. I mean, it's a pretty big resource, yeah, dude. Like is. three and a half million is something people can make a good career off of exclusively mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So the fact that that fell off was a big problem, which is part of why, I mean, we talked about it the first time, like we did the interview of like, this is why major creators, the vast majority of them try to be anywhere other than TikTok. Yes, they try yes. to move everybody over to Instagram or YouTube because those yep. are just like, Better companies to deal with, man. I you can actually get a hold of people with them versus TikTok having as big of a following as you had. We were talking about it like me and you. We were hanging out when you were banned and you were like, dude, I'm sending messages every day. This is costing mm -hmm. me significant money because yes. I'm losing yes. brand deals because I have contracts for these things. Exactly. And you like can't even get in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, my TikTok not being able to like post and stuff, it it definitely hurt a lot. But then it it's kind of a blessing. I just kind of put all my focus into Instagram and it helps so much. Like yeah. gaining 400,000 followers in a, a month on Instagram is just like, I've never heard of it. Before. Yeah. It's crazy. Like Instagram is so much harder to grow on because people like they have to click on your account to like follow you. There's not just like a follow. Yeah. But yeah. So the Instagram, I transferred over to Instagram and it feels like I have a fan base now, which yeah. is what I've always wanted. And on TikTok, it just doesn't. It feels like on TikTok that I have to still grind for views. I still have to like grind to get on the For You page. Like, I hope this gets on the For You page, which shouldn't happen because I'll look at my analytics on TikTok and it'll be 95% For You page views, 5% right. follow views. And I'm like, well, that doesn't really make sense. How do my video get 40,000 views when I have three million followers like right. how does that even happen it should at least get like a hundred thousand maybe Dude, i mean that's a problem that's been having with instagram too right it's mm -hmm. just like not as much so yeah but like uh, in comparison right like you post something on instagram the vast majority of people who will see what you post yeah. are going to be people that follow you versus exactly. on something like tiktok or like youtube shorts now that i've been putting a lot of energy yep. into the vast majority of people who are going to see it are going to be pushed through like organically through feeds and things mm -hmm. like that. And it's exactly. frustrating because then you don't have good analytics to show a brand. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but it's hard to stay consistent with anything because you're not sure who's going to see it again. Exactly. If you show content, it's not necessarily going to go to the people who were asking for a certain type of content before. Yes. It's like not having that consistency. It's exactly what it was too. Yeah, that's it's why super frustrating. That's why I love Instagram. It just, like I said, I see people coming back and it's just... Yeah. It makes me really happy. So Yeah, dude. Well, let's talk about this. You just got engaged. I did. So sick did. because you made a video like joking <laughs> about that with a ring pop yes, before. Tell yes. me tell me the story of that and then now so, it actually happening. Because that's exciting, man. Yes. I've been wanting to get engaged to my current girlfriend of six years. We've been we met in high school. So I made this joke video from a comment that told me to propose with a ring pop. So I did it and that video went stupid viral on Instagram. Yeah. And and so I did like a reenactment video of the 360 camera of me actually proposing to her and it did really good as well. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Was she excited about that or was she bummed that that's how you chose to do the proposal? That's actually not the actual That proposal, was a, yeah. a reenactment? That I was a reenactment. So. I actually have, I don't know if you saw it, it's on Instagram of the actual video of me proposing to her. I don't know, maybe, it's with maybe a, not. It's not with this camera. I set up like a right. normal camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they were like by in front of a tree or yep, whatever. Yep. Yeah, okay. So cool. that was the actual 
me proposing to her. Sure. Yeah, we took a trip to Indianapolis because she had a nail class there. So yeah, okay. Decided to do it there. Yeah, dude. And people who are a fan of you have seen her quite a few times yes, now. Yes. You and your, uh, her and your old man. Yes. You guys have been doing videos. I need to get a guest spot on, dude. I know it's not like going to blow up my followers or whatever, but like I got to do a yes. guest spot on this. People stuff. love when she's in the videos because it's like they see me every time. So when they see someone new, they're like, oh, yes. Like they, yeah. I see so many comments saying that we're their favorite couple on the internet and it's just so cool <laughs> couple goals dude. yes yeah that's it's so cool yeah no i mean yeah that's pretty dope so let's talk about the youtube thing i know you were trying are you still trying you were making doing different types of videos on youtube like for yes. me youtube since we did our first interview I, f I pushed it off i pushed it off i pushed it off because i was like man i got this show to like sound the right way and i built an audience with it i've been on the radio for years so it was like always a, a audio thing and then finally i got one camera i caved got one camera which is what we did last time so yep. that way i could cut out clips yep. but still didn't push a youtube at all because i was like I, I, i'll just i'll use this for instagram you know yep. since then when uh i got hired by uh reverb which is a music festival that happened in eau claire that's coming back uh which is gonna be august 16th and 17th so stoked that's a two-day <laughs> thing it was it was cool. so much fun man it was so much fun it was, it was fun. like emo pop punk i got to interview tom from the plain white tees and there's all time low there's all these bands it was it was super fun uh to be a part of that because it's the first time i had ever done anything like that and i got to create their mascot which yes. was dope to be hired so for like cool. my art too. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stoked about that. But anyways, I decided to finally get two more cameras. Mm -hmm. So that way it can look professional where there's a exactly. camera on you, there's a camera on me and then one on the outside. So I could like start doing that. Yes. And now yes. as of like November, I started pushing on YouTube and YouTube shorts is like where everything's came. I think I hit a hundred thousand views on the lifetime of my YouTube channel, January 9th. Dang. And let's say I was at like maybe, I don't know, 40,000 views total lifetime of the channel the month before that. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was very slow. Finally figured it out. It hit 100,000 views January 9th. And now, and we're in the middle of March, I'm at over 400,000 total, which is nothing like the numbers no, you've good. done. That's but good. when I'm seeing that growth of putting all this time and energy into it, it's like yes. kind of exciting. It's rewarding. Yes. It makes you want to grind. Yeah. It's like, yes. okay, this yes. is all this work spending on my computer is actually doing something. But I know me and you were talking during that time frame of you wanting to kind of grow on YouTube too. And I haven't seen you like put a ton of energy into it. What were you nope. trying? Have you kind of taken a step back? <laughs> I was trying to do uh, just long form videos, like gaming videos. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't worth the time that I was putting into it. Yeah. Like. I would put so many hours into editing and filming these long form videos yeah. and it just, it's not that they wouldn't perform well. I didn't, I didn't really care about that, but it was taking time away from what I actually want to do, which is short form. Yeah. I should really get into YouTube. Like I need to just start posting my short form on YouTube. I, I think, think I'm so. just lazy. I just don't want to, but yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say lazy, but I, I don't know, know what you mean. I just, that's how I'm with TikTok, dude. Yeah. I just can't take the time to do it but i really just need to when i'm uploading on tiktok and instagram just upload on it youtube yeah. like it's not that hard but it i just like being take a decent amount of time though yes. people underestimate that like for youtube shorts for this episode as an example i'll probably have 50 clips from this mm -hmm. like that's a lot of clips exactly. to have to edit out because i edit the full length video but then i have to edit it in you know the right vertical format yep and i have to shorten all the little pauses and stuff to make it work for short form and then i have to upload it to like a captions app make sure the captions are all the way that I need it to be yep. export it that way. And then I have to upload it to YouTube shorts, but I can't, it doesn't cross post. So I have yes. to upload it separately to TikTok, which means I have to put in the descriptions and hashtags and everything separately. And I'm getting faster at it, but yeah. it does actually take a long take time a long when we're not time. talking about one video a day. If you're talking about several, at least yep. it adds up to be a lot. And for me, like I haven't seen any growth on TikTok this whole time, which is fine. I don't, I, the app's frustrating me. But anyways, when, <laughs> I, when I look at like how much time and energy I've put into it, like the number of hours I've put into it versus like the non-existent growth or money or whatever that has came from that platform, yeah, I get really frustrated. Yep. So right now I'm trying really hard to commit to at least for like a month of every YouTube short that I post that I'm going to post on TikTok as well. But it legitimately for just one episode, it took me like, I don't know, probably five hours or more yeah of, of a whole day like five hours of exclusively just uploading to tiktok a video i already was done with just uploading all yep. of those individually took me that long yeah it, it takes, takes a long time forever let's talk about tiktok just got banned 
Yes. So I, I haven't actually it's, like it's looked into to. that that much. Do you know anything about it? I, I assume mean, you tapped in. I heard that it's going to be gone off your phones at the end of this month. Oh, this month? Yeah. Wow. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true. But yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. I, I guess the... I, I know Trump started the the appeal or whatever it's called to get TikTok banned way back in 2020, I think, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was a while ago. A yeah, long yeah. time ago. Yeah. And now it just got approved by both parties, by everyone. It just got approved to ban TikTok. Yeah, which is wild because, I mean, this is always how it goes and we're not going to go on a political rant, but like, man, when stuff like this happens, yeah. a lot of times if you keep your eyes open, there's something actually important that's going to get passed through the Senate yep. while this is on the like front page yeah. of everyone's media. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So I, now I'm just curious of what like is actually happening. True. They're worried about them selling our information, not saying that like that is something that's okay that like other countries have our info, but realistically they have our info anyways. Yeah. They're like, going to have it regardless. Right. They're, it's not like Instagram's not selling. Like Meta is yeah. definitely selling your information. Yeah. Google's definitely selling your information. I don't know that, and I guess I haven't researched it that much, but I don't know that banning TikTok realistically is going to have that big of an impact as I, far as like saving people's info. I don't think it will, but I, I know it will hurt a bunch of people. Creators. Like, yeah, like a lot of people run their business off the TikTok shop. Yeah, sure. So I think that's going to hurt a lot of small businesses. But personally, I don't really care if TikTok goes away. It's not... I don't really care if it does. Another one will just come out. Yeah. Another same exact like app will come out. People yeah. will start using that one. Like that's what always happens. Like with Vine, Vine right, went sure. away. TikTok came. Like it's right. it's gonna always be a cycle. Yeah, and I think it's just about like if you want to grow and become a content creator or whatever, it's just about like seeing when the new things pop up and putting energy into it at the yep. beginning. Because yep. like right now with YouTube Shorts being how I've been able to reach a lot of people it's because there's not as many people uploading to YouTube shorts. Like yeah. I was explaining this to somebody the other day about how like Instagram, pretty much everyone on the app posts, Yep. the vast majority of people, even if they don't post often, they do post. Yeah. So you see everyone's stuff. If you go over to something like TikTok, the vast majority don't post. Yes. They mostly just consume the content. So there's way less creators on that YouTube's platform. YouTube's even worse. Right, well better for a content yeah, creator, yeah, right? On yeah. YouTube, how many people do you know watch YouTube? Me, everybody everyone everybody watches youtube for one yes. reason or another my dad watches youtube to fix plumbing stuff like exactly. everyone watches youtube versus what percentage of people like that have accounts that watch youtube what percentage actually create on youtube i would say less than one less than one percent for sure easily right so that's where all of a sudden you can have all this organic growth like, yeah working on that but for me i don't know if you've had this problem i think the biggest cesspool in the world is youtube comments <laughs> oh my god dude i see stuff that i know people would never say in real life like i know they would because it's just so outlandish like yeah. horrible sexist things or racist just like the worst <laughs> worst things and i was trying to understand it i never understood why people said they don't read youtube comments until i started putting yeah. stuff on youtube yeah and i think maybe you'll agree with me maybe you won't i think the reason it's like that is because on instagram if you you leave a trolley comment your account is attached. That's a fact. So people can click on it and see who you are, right? Yeah. So it's not as anonymous, Same. even if you're yeah. private. Yep. Now, if you go on like YouTube, almost everyone who comments, again, don't post. It'll be user 6732 blah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you don't blah. even know who they are. Right, they have complete anonymity. Yeah. So they can say something just absolutely horrible <laughs> and there's like no yep. one knows that it's them. Exactly. I agree. Oh my God, dude, it's the worst thing that's ever happened. <laughs> like I know it's good to try to interact with people yeah. on all those things, but like, man, I see some crazy stuff on Instagram too. But most of the time, it's like it's funny. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. comments on TikTok and Instagram are more funny than the videos that I'm watching. I'm like, oh, this video is funny, and then you look in the comments and be like, that comment is way funnier than the video. Yeah, it's, dude, it's, it's like so funny. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to uh, get. I'm waiting to start getting those comments on my YouTube. Yeah. So far, it's mostly either kind of unrelated things or it's like people being pretty horrible but it's the funny <laughs> thing of right like somebody goes yeah. uh the number of times i've had people comment who cares i'm like well clearly you because you like just <laughs> you comment. commented right you watched it and commented so <laughs> if now, you didn't care you would have scrolled <laughs> yeah dude exactly or people who are like 
I don't want to see any of this on my feed. Like if it's like a liberal post or something or whatever, you know what I mean? Those yeah. are the ones that really get a lot of comments. It's like, well, because you commented, now you're going to see this type of thing specifically yeah. because you commented. Exactly. So, and for anyone out there, the real quick hack of, man, why don't I ever see my friends on my Instagram feed anymore? It's because you don't comment on their videos, bro. That's why. Yep. I was listening. You're not to engaging. A, dude, for real. I was listening to a thing with like the CEO of Instagram and he was saying, I told why, the, why this too, that the biggest complaint they get is that people like the platform doesn't show the people that you follow. Like it doesn't show their content. It just shows all the suggested content. Yeah. So that's the biggest complaint. He said, however, the analytics show that people actually consume the suggested content and interact with it more than the content of the people they follow. Yep. So even though that's the complaint, they're not going to do that anyways. Yeah. They're going to show even more suggested content. True. So this is me telling you again out there, anyone you actually care and you follow, whatever, don't just watch it. Even if it's just like you have no, no real input and you just want to drop a stupid emoji comment, like do that. It will yes. make it that content actually show to your things and you'll be supporting whatever your friend, you know, yeah, whatever. Support your thing. homies. Come on. Yeah, dude, <laughs> do it. And hug your homies. Hug your homies. I mean, not that I need to plug them, but <laughs> that like uh, this dude on Instagram, it's like 037. He makes those personally, mm -hmm. like this hoodie that's behind you with his yep. sewing machine. And I've wanted one They're forever. So cool. They're so cool. And he finally sent me a box and I was like. Yeah, that one's fire. I saw that one was, on, your, on your story. I was pretty jacked about it. Dude, I think we should do, we should make a playlist on Spotify where me, you, and in general, all the guests can just add songs to as they want and That'd just cool. have that slowly build into like the most eclectic, longest Spotify playlist ever. That would be insane. I feel like it'd be kind of dope, right? <laughs> it'd be kind of cool, yeah. Like, cause I'm always trying to discover new music. Same. Like, I've been trying to figure out ways not only to like be more open and personal on social media because I haven't been in the last year. Um, part of it and not trying to talk like down about or whatever but i was in a relationship and when you're with someone who doesn't work in the space at all mm -hmm. it's like kind of awkward because you like people don't understand why you do what you do you yeah. know what i mean and yeah. i'm not saying that they like think you're egotistical or something but they don't really get it which then makes you feel even more awkward about doing it <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so yeah. i hadn't been as like personal on social media for a little while but i'm trying to like focus more on it yeah um but i posted on my story today like i just need to find new rappers to listen to man i gotta post more like that because True. i got so many dms like yep. i haven't a, in the first hour that i posted it i think i had for me which is a lot like 20 dm responses of Dang. music yeah it was a lot that is um, a yeah so i gotta do more of that stuff but anyways i'm always trying to discover new music do you want to do a rapid fire let's do it okay cool <laughs> let's do it i love doing these things man yeah, i like fun. didn't used to do this type of stuff before i was really focused on people's story arcs yep um but now i like doing a little bit of a mixture yeah you know see what the other person likes yeah well and i do a lot of interviews with people that um well i don't know how to say it any other way people who are bigger right yeah so a lot of these people unlike you're the exception to the rule because we just know each other personally, but most people that I interview have been interviewed a bunch of times before yep. because they've had a long career and they're, you know, have notoriety or whatever. And I don't want to ask the same stuff. True. So like, this is kind of a perfect way to get little fun sound bites out of people. <laughs> things yeah. you wouldn't otherwise know. Yeah. Um, okay. You ready? I'm ready. Favorite Girl Scout cookie. Uh, those peanut butter chocolate ones. Do you freeze them? No. Should. <laughs> I've never tried that. Favorite shoes. Um, Yeezys. No, they're the ones that I made you. That's true. Are you wearing them right I'm now? I'm wearing right? them. Take one off. I want to show the camera. I just want people to see what I made for Jaren. Mm-hmm. That's right. Boom. Custom. One These of are one. Fire. Peppy. The Nike Peppy Dunk Dunks. Lows. They're so cool. <laughs> I love them. Favorite cartoon them. as a kid. SpongeBob. Last TV show that you binged. Uh, love is blind. Dude, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I hate myself for watching it, but I can't. Me too. I can't keep myself away, dude. Oh God! You know they did the Minneapolis one. No. Yeah, that's even the, they. So they record. They're recording it right now, and I saw all the casting call like messages. Okay. I wanted to do like I was seeing someone, so I didn't. But I wanted to like apply so bad. Oh, that'd be so bad, funny, dude. It'd be so it funny. would be hilarious. I want to apply for the show Survivor. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I just want to, so dude. Fun. I think it'd be fun to just do some kind of dumb reality TV. Yeah. Like I really would it genuinely would like. <laughs> genuinely i would like to do it i think it would be me too. awesome if you could be on any reality tv show is that the one survivor 100 percent. Sur like the one where there's uh the actual survivor where there's 30 seasons like that survivor yeah well yeah it, 
however long they I think they go for like 38 days or something whoa yeah it'd be insane I think I would do so good yeah dude I think you should do the one where it's um just one person alone the whole time oh is it called what? alone no it's literally like survivor and there's two teams no they, I know survivor but oh, have yeah. you heard of the one that's called alone no they do one where they drop one person off in the oh, wilderness nah. <laughs> totally alone not allowed to interact with anybody at all and they see how long they can last oh not I think I would do pretty good with anybody I think I could do really good yeah you're you're you like being alone okay do. cats or dogs dogs yeah I know because you have one what kind of dog do you got I have a cocker spaniel his name's cooper is that why you can't well yeah he's in all your videos he's in all my videos he's in a bunch of videos what's your favorite video you've made with cooper um the one where we were playing fetch out in the baseball field yeah. and he took a poop mid video and it was just so funny. <laughs> Are you ever going to put the Insta 360 thing? On I've like, tried. And it hasn't worked out. It hasn't worked. Dude, I'm going to post tried. this. I saw someone make a video with a turtle uh, skateboarding. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. put my little painted turtle on a fingerboard last night. And no he was skating in the, I'm, <laughs> seriously, I'm going to post it. It That's was funny. hilarious. You got to make a video with my dog. True. A little puppy dog. Yeah, dude, he's twelve and he's mean. <laughs> what's your most irrational fear? Uh spiders. Dude. What's your worst those. spider story? Oh, I was working at my job that I work at right now in a basement mm -hmm. and I was working up with pipe and stuff like that, and a huge wolf spider was sitting right by my hand and <sighs> I freaked out. It sucks dude. so bad. I hate them. Dude, wolf spiders are huge. They're massive. Yeah, they look like small tarantulas. Yes, but they're, they're not huge. that small. And they're fat and hairy. They're and like, like this big. Yeah, dude. <sighs> it was so <sighs> gross. Dude, I was uh, I was ziplining in Thailand. Um, I sound super privileged <laughs> when I say that. But I was, <laughs> anyways. Crazy. And um, didn't see anything the whole tri trip in Thailand. I saw one small scorpion at one point, which is kind of gnarly. But yeah. didn't see any big spiders, which I thought was going to be something that was going to happen that whole trip. I'm up there finish the zip lining do like 40 of them whatever and they have like the lunch in the like restaurant area at the end yep dude i was sitting there eating and then people started coming up to me to take pictures and i was like confused and i looked up and like that close this black and yellow thing like huge not hairy but like black and yes, bright yellow yes huge spider almost the size of my hand was sitting there oh right above me gross I freaked out and everybody <laughs> else is putting like the spiders here putting their phones right next to the thing and i'm like dude what if that thing jumps on your face man yeah i just don't like them yeah dude it's creepy <laughs> what's your favorite part of your day um going home from work is like my favorite part <laughs> what do you do right when you get home that makes it so awesome i sit down on the couch because i'm on my feet all day man. i just want to sit yeah, people need to start grinding like you do. If they want to get, <laughs> if you want to get to where you want to get to, you need to be on the grind, you need man. To grind. Yeah. What's What's the worst part of your day? Waking up. <laughs> do you have to set an alarm? I guess. Yeah, wake up at four fifty. Oh my god! See the fact again, the fact that you can make a living and you have made a living doing what you do online, yeah. and then you're still waking up to go deal with what you deal with at work. Yep. That's how you get ahead in life, kids. It is. It you is. Gotta, you got to grinding. Do that. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Um, mahi mahi. Ooh, seafood. How do you like it? Do you want it grilled? Do you want it fried? Any, any. I like it all. Um, deep fried fire. Though. We gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go to go to the coast and go have some I seafood. I love together. seafood, dude. So good. That would be killer. Okay, you've traveled a lot now, especially like yeah. with what you do. I know you and Wyatt have gone on some trips. What's your favorite state that you've been to outside of Wisconsin? um california i think really what part of it san diego oh, okay i was gonna say man i i say it too often i shouldn't say that california has a lot of cool things it does. to it but i haven't been to san diego and i've never heard anyone so say beautiful. anything bad about san diego so beautiful yeah everybody every part okay what's a state that you hope you'd never go back to um iowa iowa dude i heard good things about iowa recently i heard people just, are really fun i just drove through it at like two in the morning and it sucked so bad dude that's how i felt about nebraska oh wait no it was nebraska yeah yeah it was nebraska, nebraska not iowa nebraska, nebraska sorry i hope if somebody out there wants to show me a good time yeah, that sounds weird to say but like <laughs> it has like fun stuff going on in yeah. like lincoln and like i can come out and you can change my mind 
Yeah, I, I drove that. through Omaha, Nebraska at three in the morning, and it was the most boring thing in the world. Worst hotel I've ever stayed at was in Lincoln, <laughs> and it was just because I was driving to Colorado, and I was like, that's I'll, where I was if it's from. as horrible as it is, that's the only reason people are driving through there, dude. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I could throw my tent on top of this bed, and it would work out, and I probably should have because <laughs> it was absolutely, dude, it was absolutely horrible. What's your biggest pet peeve? Um, uh, smacking your food. Who do you know that smacks their food the worst? Who have you had to call out? I don't think I've ever called anyone out for it, but who do you avoid because of that? I just hear it in public sometimes and I'm like, come on, dude, close your mouth. <laughs> my older daughter, they're both the best thing in the world, but my older one does that so often these days. And she's like almost 12, man. <laughs> I'm like, Lily, I'm not trying to hear you eat literally all the time. Literally. Okay. You're, you're young. You're on top of the trends. I dress the same all the time. What's, what do you think is the worst style trend right now? I'm going to say my, the one that I hate the most, I know this is going to piss off some of these younger dudes, like choker pearl necklaces are not like, just, <laughs> they're not it, man. Like I can't wait until that goes away. I, I yeah. just, I hate, I hate that one. I think this might make some people mad, but painting your nails, I don't really like it. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I just don't really like it. Yep. Yeah, no, fair enough, man. And, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to be like, oh, it's not masculine enough to whatever. Like, I'm not you can dress like that. whatever. Just... Yeah, I don't care. But nah. I just don't think that it looks good. Yeah. For, honestly, I mean, I guess I've seen some dudes paint their nails and I'm like, that eh, could be cool. Yeah. Like if it's maybe. black, fine, I guess. I feel like that looks yeah, like a musician. The black one looks the best, but. What's the best style trend that's happened recently? Uh, baggy clothes coming back dude baggy. i love baggy cl that's what i wear i sure. wear baggy clothes dude you, i was the typical kid if you ever look up um crew pants yep that's what i looked like when i was 15 that's the fire. super tight crew pants i'm <laughs> glad that that is gone yeah dude. Dude. that was a horrible one. um who's your favorite content creator um first one that comes to mind garrett clark why He's super good at golf, and I love his entertaining videos. Yeah, They're I think so it's good. funny that you post golf videos periodically. Yeah, I like that, yeah. like, even though you know that's probably not going to go viral or no. anything, you're like, I just like this enough that I I'm just posting it. it anyways. I just love golf, so yeah, I dude. just sprinkle it in there every now and again. Dude, I got to go golfing with you. It's I'm, so like, fun. trash at it. Who's the worst content creator that's blowing up right now that if you could just never see again, you would love that? Oh and I'm calling gosh. people out. It's horrible, but there's some pretty bad ones. Um, oh my gosh, I don't even know. I can't even think of a bad one. I'm gonna say Lanky Box, dude. My daughter's super is. into that. It's like a YouTube channel, and okay. I just, it's so stupid and horrible. And I like, oh, I don't think I have one to be no. honest. I don't really see any bad content creators, and I'm like, your videos suck. I don't really see those that often. Right. Well, I bet you'll tell me off, Mike. But that's okay. <laughs> you were really into cars. What's your dream car? Any dollar amount you spend anything on it. What's your dream car? Porsche GT3 RS. What does that look like? What year is that? Is that like a 2024 it's a current one? Yeah. How much do those cars cost? Probably like three to four to five million. No, I'm just, just, <laughs> just hundred thousand. Dang, dude. Three hundred thousand, four hundred. You're gonna get that with that H bag money, dude. No kidding. <laughs> What's a brand? Could be huge, could be small. What's a brand you would love to work with if you could? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, it would probably. Oh gosh, man. Hmm. Let me let me think for a I'm second. I'm trying to get that Joe Rogan Spotify sponsorship, bro. That'd be crazy. Hit me up with a bill. That'd no, be I'm just kidding. Crazy. <laughs> that would be tight, dude. Oh man. I want to be on Wisconsin Public Radio. I reached out to them like way early on. That'd I, be cool. I just think it would be dope. I bet I probably I, I bet I could get on there. Maybe True. just a random episode. Low key, I think mine right now would be the Ninja Blender. Like I think that'd be so sick. Dude, I sent a message today and I like I'm not gonna lie, for a cream cheese company yep. because it's the best cream cheese <laughs> I've ever had. I started going to like I got this cream cheese. It's called St. Paul Bagelry. And I got bagels and cream cheese from uh the co-op downtown, Monopoly yeah. Market Food Cooperative. And it, it's like the honey walnut one with the um cinnamon raisin bagels. Dude, I've been eating two a day and limiting myself to two <laughs> a day. And I'm not even a bagel person. I'm like obsessed with this stuff right now and i sent them a message like with a picture of it saying this is my third container i bought this week yeah i'm trying to actually, work with you guys as silly as that is i actually thought of my my main one okay. would be culver's i eat culver's like four times a week i mean i feel dude your stomach's gotta just be 
destroyed. But no, I, I love feel, it. Dude, so good. We should we should do it. They work with like Wisconsin people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude. Well, I, th- I feel like what you do would make total sense. You got to yeah. hit them up, man. We got to get that. Col- we got to get that Culver's plug. What's a brand that it doesn't matter? You would not make content for them. Doesn't matter how much they pay you. You're just not doing it. Um. Oh my gosh, I don't know, dude. These are tough. Dude, I know I'm putting you on the spot. I've had a few. I've had a few like this one company for like women's fragrance hit me up and I was like, I would never do anything. Dude, I'll wear women's <laughs> fragrance. I was like shameless dude, I'll do it, man. I don't even care. I don't want to wear women's fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care, dude. I'm I'm doing it. <laughs> Somebody with a women's fragrance brand hit me up, man. I'm down. When I was talking to Coobs, he was like, I'm not gonna promote your electric toothbrush. Bro, I'm definitely <laughs> trying to promote your electric tooth- That's funny. toothbrush. Like hit me electric up with that stuff, dude. I'm so That's down. So funny. Okay, your house is on fire. You don't own a house yet, but if you did, <laughs> all your belongings are in it. It's on fire. You can only grab one thing and we're not talking about your dog we're not saving your girlfriend lives are still intact what's one item only thing you can keep <laughs> you could get another one bro insta 360 <laughs> man you're earning your contract with those the people camera with that right now. we need to save it dude mine would be my grandfather clock i know i can't oh, actually throw that on my back and lift true. it but i have to turn off the sound so it doesn't <laughs> gong during the episodes yep. But that was my favorite thing when I was a, a young kid, when I would go like visit my grandparents once a year, I'd always sleep in the living room and hear that thing. Yep, me too, man. I just loved it, dude. And then it was in the you will. Liked it? Yeah, I loved it. And when I was in, it was in the will when my grandfather died that it was to me. And I got like 16 cousins, Dang. but saved it for me. And then my dad drove all the way down to Illinois to get it, which is like five hours. And then he kept it in this house because it's the house I grew up in yeah. and told me I could finally have it when I bought my first house. That's so when sweet. I bought my first house, he brought it over and then I ended up moving back into my parents' house. But I did buy this house now. But, that's so <laughs> but still, cool. it's my grandfather's grandfather clock. So, that's sweet. Yeah. That's that cool. thing's that's cool. my favorite thing. What was the best year of your life? Um, 2017. Why? I could drive. Dude, you're so young. What? <laughs> That's what when I turned 16. Oh my God, 2001? Yep. Wild. Yep. Okay. <laughs> what was the worst year of your life? Um. Oh boy, probably, I don't know, 20, 2022, probably 2021. Not 2020 like everybody else? No, I love 2020. Because that's when everything blew up. What was the most pivotal moment in your life um, that changed the trajectory of your life? COVID probably. That yeah. lockdown, that was yeah. crazy. That's so fun. <laughs> That's a sound bite. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, we've been, we've been talking forever. Um, I want to get another story out of you, though. Because, again, when you do things that you're passionate about for a living, which, dude, I just want to say this. When people have this, like, weird connotation of influencer and they think it's, like, all they picture are, like, girls with you know posing like doing the duck that like that's not what an influencer is. An influencer yeah. is somebody that has any kind of influence. Exactly. That means, like, any your favorite actor is yeah. an influencer right yeah. it's yeah. just like this term that has this weird connotation which is really lame but when you are an influencer typically it just means you're really good at doing the thing that you like doing yeah and people pay attention to it so it's not a bad thing so people say content creator versus influencer it really is the same thing pretty, you're just pretty creating much. content either short form or long form being in a movie yes. or whatever but yes it's the same thing Yes, so, still content. Right, and you do enjoy doing it. The vast majority of people that do it. It's not exclusively a money thing because you yep. can probably make money easier doing something else. Like, it's hard probably to make money. Probably low-key, yeah. Yeah, for real. The, there's people that make a lot of money on like creating content, but there's so many more people that try and never make money. If you asked one content creator, if they they wouldn't say, I don't like making content. No, because that's the whole point, Yeah. right? Yeah. So anyways... So you're doing stuff that you actually genuinely enjoy doing, and that's really the only reason it worked yeah. out anyways. Can you share a story that you're really grateful for, but it only happened because you chose to pursue creating content? Um, yeah, so I met I met a friend online, and we hadn't met each other before, and I flew all the way to San Diego. This is where I went there, and I actually got to meet him for the first time, and it was super fun and super cool. I got to stay at his house for five days and just see what he does, see how he lives. Just seeing like the different lifestyle compared to Wisconsin to San Diego, California. It's like, dang, this is so cool. Who like, is this person? And did you did he ask you to like how did that happen? So we've known each other um, on social media since I was uh, twelve. I think oh, we met whoa. each other yeah, okay. from social media. Dang. 
um, just playing video games and stuff like that. But we've always kept in contact. So we've always planned on like meeting each other. So sure. I was just like, hey, I don't work right now really. And you're on winter break for school. So I'm going to come like college? Sandy. Yeah, for college. Okay, I was going to say you're not hanging out with a high school kid. No, no, right no, no. Now, right? <laughs> he, he, he goes to SDSU, which is pretty cool. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, he's uh, he's one year younger than me. Oh, cool. His name's Brandon and just went to his house and kicked it with him for five days and it was so freaking fun. Dude, that's dope, man. Yeah. What was your favorite part about being out there? What was like, um, you said you got to see the difference in lifestyle between yes, that versus yeah. here. What is it that they have that you were like, man, I wish we had that here besides the weather? Um, yeah, the weather is great, but it's just like hilly. It's so hilly. Sure. There's cool rocks everywhere. We went on this crazy hike just in the middle of the city. There's a huge mountain that we cl climbed up of and you can go on the top of it and overlook all of San Diego. And it was so sick. Wow, dude. You're so cool. Well, I mean, the difference is you can't buy a house in San Diego, not even with no, HVAC money, no, man. No, That's just not going to happen. That's why you choose to live here. San Diego is actually the most expensive city in America to live in. Really? Yes. I did not know that until he told me that. I, I thought like, San Dang. Francisco or New York were. Nope. San Diego. Wow. Well, yeah. I guess maybe I'll get to San Diego with that quick trip money. <laughs> just kidding. I don't get paid that much. <laughs> but quick trip's dope. Quick trip's All right, dope. man. Well, thank you so much for doing this yes, again. Dude, maybe so you'll fun. be the first guest to ever do a round three simply round because three. Uh, we're friends and we hang out. Yes, we'll have to do a round three in like two months or something. Dude, yeah, probably. <laughs> so much is going to change during that yeah. time frame. All right. Again, where can everybody find you? Um, yeah, do all the shout out stuff. Yes. My username is I'm Jaren with an S at the end. People like to say I'm Jaren's. It's on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Also Facebook if you want to. I don't really post on there, but you can find me on there too. Yeah, dude. Even just following people makes a big difference. I yeah. mean, it sounds silly, but really though, the other thing Drop comments on stuff, dude. Yes. Everyone says the like Engage. and subscribe thing, but really it is like, that'll be what shows up. And then when we're trying to like make a living, we have to provide all these analytics to people and yeah. it sucks. But like, dude, I can pump out way more awesome interviews, not just for the sake of putting out more, but like I can afford to do more interviews if I make more money because exactly. then I can like, and I don't make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So whatever, like and subscribe, do all the stupid things. Like um, and subscribe. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, exactly. Run up the passion pod YouTube. We got to get it going. I'm telling you, right? Shout now it out. Now we're reaching your audience, yes. all of your audience. Man, if you're my friend, if you like me, they probably yes. would like me too. No I kidding. think you like me. I think I do. Okay, cool. 